This oil pastel tutorial will show you how to sketch and draw an oil pastel jelly filled powdered sugar donut. This is one of my students' favorite things to draw and I've never really sat down and done it myself. So I'm making a tutorial so when they're making their own jelly donut, I feel confident that I can do it too. I'll post all of my materials in the description box, but you need a colorful piece of paper, oil pastels, and a pencil. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an art tutorial. So I already have a donut on my page and I want them to be the same size. I want it to look like it came from the same bakery. So I'm gonna put a tick mark at the zero and the five because that is the size I made my first donut. Start by drawing a curved smiley face line. Doing it slow with sketchy lines and then I'm going to reverse the line and do a frowny face line on top. Notice I haven't connected my edges yet. Your eraser is your friend and then you're going to connect the sides gracefully so it looks like a baked potato. So I did this pretty quickly. If you're interested in a slower, more detailed step-by-step -step tutorial, click the link above and I will show you how to draw a donut with a hole and a bite mark. So once yours looks like a baked potato, go ahead and add a curved line. You could put icing on your filled donut, but mine's gonna be jelly with powdered sugar. So I just wanna kinda have a line of separation from the top of the jelly donut and like the side. I'm using Faber Castell 24 pack oil pastels, and you can see they're very loved. Um, I use this in the classroom and they're fantastic. They're easy to grip, they're not as messy, and they last a really long time. Pentel is another brand I really like, but they just don't last as long in the classroom. Start with your darkest color, which is going to be your dark brown. So even if you're using a different brand from me, find a dark brown that looks like chocolate and underline thickly that first smiley face line that you drew. That's gonna be step one. Then you're gonna do a little bit on the top and you can see why the separation is important. I'm gonna do like a C shape on this side. You don't wanna outline the whole thing because light would be hitting it on the top and then a reverse C on the other side. So if you're interested in watching me blend more dough colors, check out this video above that will show you what to do if you're doing a regular donut or check out this video. Yes, I have so many donut videos that will show you how to do a jelly donut with like icing on it. For example, if it's dipped in chocolate. Oops, I forgot the bite mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in and because jelly is spilling out of this bite mark, I'm not too concerned about it. I'm making two like rainbow lines and then I'm drawing a blob that will represent the jelly. So with a bite mark and a jelly donut, you don't have to pay too close attention to the detail. I am outlining my lines with brown so it blends because the jelly will cover it up. Okay, go back to your yellow tan. This is your second color. And my students say it reminds them of yellow mustard. And if you're using the beautiful sunshine yellow color, it's gonna make a weird um, green. So make sure that this is either like a yellow brown, yellow tan, um, or the technical name for this color is yellow ochre. So just make sure it's not like a sunshine yellow. And you're gonna go all the way down to the brown and fill it up to that line of separation. Um, do the same with the bite mark, just kind of overlap it, keeping in mind jelly will be spilling out. So I always go back to my brown because the yellow tan um, kind of overtook it. So I want there to be a little bit of a shadow down at the bottom so it looks round. So I'm just putting that brown back in and very lightly taking my yellow color and blending it slightly so it looks like it has a curve to it. So with blending, it's not one and done. You wanna just make sure that you're kind of going back and forth and revisiting colors that maybe were not as dominant as others. Then I'm gonna take my white and put a really thick curve line of white in the center of the dough. Okay, so that's like where um, the yellow tan would be the fattest, like where the roundness of the donut would stand out. And that's gonna make this look not like a bagel, but more like a donut. And it's gonna really heighten the white. So it's not pure white, you're very lightly going over it with your yellow, and that's not only gonna make it look three-dimensional, but it's gonna lighten up that yellow to really give it that delicious dough-looking color that makes you wanna eat a donut. Once that has a nice blend to it, I go back with my white and I add a really like heavy-handed white line in the center of where the dough is because I want it to look just like really round. And if you're lucky enough to have a donut in front of you, there's almost like a white line in the area that sticks out the most. And so I'm trying to create not only that depth, but also a little bit of a highlight. All right, same colors for the top of the donut. And again, you could put icing on it, but mine's gonna be with powdered sugar. So I'm using the dough colors. 
And I'm gonna blend just like I did before, but with a slightly different shape, the brown towards the center of the dill nut. Now I've done this before where I filled it all in with the um, yellow tan, and I'm gonna do it a little bit differently today. Um, going back with my brown so you can see that there is a nice shadow so you're just putting it back where it is so you truly have a gradient a gradual blend of color and not just like blocks of color that override each other so once you have that darkness blended into your yellow tan or your mustard yellow or your yellow ochre whatever color you're using um, typically I would fill this whole space in with that yellow color the reason why I'm not doing that is I want to give the illusion that it has powdered sugar on it. And so instead of filling it in with yellow and then putting the white on top of that, which is what I would do if it was just plain without powdered sugar on it, I'm going to take my white and you can see I left um, a gap and I'm going to fill that in and shade it so that it completes the top of the donut um, and it gets a really nice white highlight. So watch how when I'm doing this, it really fills it in and it gives it that nice lightest area. And that's gonna be very helpful because I'm gonna add a lot of white on top of this for powdered sugar. Take a moment and look at the difference here between that white highlight on the top of the donut and the white highlight on the edge. So you can see the blue paper through. It is a little whiter, but it's not quite as vibrant. So if you ever wonder why I blend oil pastel on top of oil pastel, it's to really get that rich, thick color. So see how it's kind of pulling down to the paper? I would stop here and be happy with it, but I just love, especially when you're making art about food, I want it to look as delicious as it looks in real life. So I could stop here and it would just be a plain donut that when you bit into it, jelly would come out. Speaking of jelly, time to get my jelly colors out and ready. I'm using purple as my dark, red as my middle, and white as the end of my gradient. I'm taking my purple, my darkest color, and I'm coloring in the bite mark and I wanna go off and out of the donut a little bit. I'm filling that in completely. Look at my hand and how I'm making a scribbling motion. And I'm gonna do the same thing with red on top of that. Jelly is a very different consistency than the dough or icing of a regular donut. So you want it to look textured and sticky and jelly. And look at how nice that red and purple really react together. So black is a questionable color when mixing, especially with oil pastels, because it can muddy up and change your colors. But for jelly, I'm gonna put a little black shadow on the edge just to really push the depth. And I'm gonna do a little bit underneath the jelly as well. I'm gonna go back and blend it with my purple so it matches and looks like it's a part of the jelly and just wait until I start adding that white. Make sure it's clean. So I like to wipe it on a scratch piece of paper and look at that. So you should really Google jelly donuts if you don't have one out in front of you because the bling bling highlight on the jelly is what makes it super eye catching. So I like to put a little roundness down at the bottom like where it would be sitting on the surface, whether it's a tabletop, a plate, and I'm gonna blend it with my red so it looks like it's a part of the jelly coming out. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, jelly could just be peeking out. It could be spilling out onto the table. This could be a key lime donut. It could be chocolate or custard filled. So these are the colors I'm using for jelly, but you could use the same concept for whatever flavor you're going for. Now for the shadow, and for this artwork, I'm using black and gray. I actually prefer to use a dark blue and a light blue. That's a throw to one of my favorite artists, Wayne Tebow, who loves to use really vibrant blue shadows. But my students like that, but a lot of them have been also experimenting with black and gray. So I thought, okay, I'll try it out for myself. And I do have to say, for this donut, I really wish I would have done black and gray, or I'm sorry, I would have done the blue color combination. But because the other donut I did in class has the black and gray, the shadows would be the same if you're doing multiple donuts. Unless of course you're like in a situation where there's flashing strobe lights or something. So I underlined with the black going underneath the jelly and around the corners of the sides of the donut. And then I'm gently blending it with the gray. And so this is just giving the illusion that the donut is sitting on a table um, and it's not like floating out in space. Now I'm imagining how fun it would be to create a galaxy background with space donuts, but that's another issue for another day. I just wanna ground my work because this is like a still life. Like it, you want it to look realistic like the donut is sitting on the page, or at least that's what I'm telling my students. You might want your donut to have cat ears and be dancing. It's your work of art. 
So I'm feeling pretty done and I could stop here, but there's something about the powdered sugar when I looked up images that really excited me. So I'm gonna take a different brand white. This is Cray Paw and you can see it blends and smushes much easier. So I'm going to put just a few marks and that's a little too liney. It reminds me a little too much of sprinkles. So I'm gonna experiment by tap, tap, tapping. Nope, that's annoying. And then I'm doing kind of a little scribble mark and I feel like that looks a little bit more natural. So I'm gonna add as much as I would like um, from the images I've seen. And I'm saying images because I don't usually eat jelly donuts. I feel like they're kind of too much and I would rather have chocolate than jelly. Um, but I really like visually how they look. And I'm making this video because my students ask me every time I teach this, what about a jelly donut? What about this? What about jelly coming out? And so I've always kind of been like, yeah, figure it out. And so I thought, well, I'll sit down and kind of problem solve and make a video as well. So you are covering up some of that work that you did. Um, so if you don't like this much powdered sugar, just put some around the edges or like a light dusting in the center. This is getting really thick. Um, and so I'm just trying to think, okay, where would the powdered sugar actually sit on the donut itself? It would go off the edge a little bit. So I wanna make sure there's a nice like white edge against the background. I don't want it to look, to look too scribbly, so I'm adding some lines in there to kind of make the texture more appropriate. And you can see that some of the brown and yellow showing through, which is good. That's gonna make it look realistic. If it was just solid white, it would be awkward, like it's not a part of the donut itself. So speaking of shadows, like I talked earlier, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue just to give it just a little bit more dimension. Yes, there's some darkness where the brown and tan colors were, but a little bit of blue, I feel like livens it up a little bit and gives the powdered sugar a little bit of its own voice. And yes, it's attached to the donut, but I want it to have like a little bit more of a shadow that's different. Of course, I need to blend it because it looks way too blue. Keep in mind, blue and yellow make green, so you don't wanna mix it too much, and that gives it a little bit more life. Okay, so I feel finished. Looks realistic, looks delicious. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more donut tutorials, I have so many, I've lost count. I'll post all of them in the description box.